Hello and welcome to question 8 on the June 2008 mechanics paper. Now, quite a lot of information to read through here. I'm not going to read it all through. You can read through it for yourself. But there's a couple of key points. The first question asks us to find the acceleration, but it's only a two-mark question. So normally I would draw a diagram for this question, but actually I've told lots of information, useful information, to help find the acceleration for a two-mark question. I'm told that for three seconds, true Q travels a distance of six meters, and it initially was at rest. So, a complicated question like this, it's going to be more than two marks for a diagram style question. So this must be a SUVA. Let's consider six, for S is six, initially at rest, we want to find out the acceleration, and we know that T is three. So I know I'm going to use S equals UT, plus a half at squared. So putting all my information in, 6 is equal to 0 plus 4.5a, well that's 3 squared, 9, half of it is 4.5. So I know that a comes out as 4 thirds ms minus 2. Now if I want uh, a rounded answer, that would be 1 point, it's actually 1.3 recurring, but if I take it 1.33, to three significant figures. But I'm actually going to use the four thirds answer for any subsequent work. Let's look at how see how the question progresses. Because it's quite a long and involved question. You might have to replay some of this. This is where we are going to need a diagram because we now need to find the coefficient of friction. So we don't know what mu is. However, we're going to start adding some forces to our diagram. Now, we've just worked out from the first part of the question actually the acceleration is four thirds in that direction. I've got force F which acts in that direction. I'm going to have, if I'm particle Q, this string is going to create a tension which is going to make me feel that there's a force holding me back. If I'm particle P, the tension in the string is actually what's going to help me to move forwards, so I'm going to experience the tension acting forwards. I've got friction acting backwards on both particles. So I'm going to call this the friction at Q and this the friction at P. And I've also got two weights. The weight of Q, which is 3G down, and the weight of P, which is 2G down. Now, if I, it's on a rough surface, so it's actually making contact with the surface. So that also must mean that I have a normal reaction force at Q and a normal reaction force at P. So if I call this RQ, I call this RP, I've now got a diagram with all my information on. Now, I need this to help me find several equations. Now, if I consider the whole system, and the reason I'm going to consider the whole system is because the tension acting to the right will cancel with the tension acting to the left, so it reduces the number of unknowns I can have in my equation. They're going to cancel each other out. But if I resolve upwards for the whole system, I get that RP plus RQ is equal to 5G. Now, I don't know if I need that yet. Let's resolve to the right horizontally. We've got F, which is 30 newtons acting to the right. And then we've got minus, well, we've got combined friction. So we've got the friction at Q and the friction at P. And they're both acting negatively. So this combined re resultant force is equal to the mass, or in this, in this case, the combined mass of 2 plus 3 multiplied by acceleration. So this is the force is equal to the mass times acceleration. We can sort this out. Well, we can use this equation here. We know that friction, when motion occurs, the maximum value of friction is equal to mu multiplied by the reaction of that particle. So we know that the friction is equal to mu r. Well, we know a value for that, so we know we need to know it's mu multiplied by this, the value of 
combined value of ours, and we know this is going to be 20 over 3. So when we rearrange all this, what we're going to get is 30 minus 20 over 3 is equal to mu and rp plus rq is, we know from this equation, is 5g. So sorting all this out, we can work out what mu is. Using our calculators, g is 9.8. We can find out that mu is equal to 10 over 21, which is equal to decimal form 0 0.47619047. Six two. We know this is approximately equal to 0.476 to three significant figures. No units for coefficient of friction. Right. Last um, well, part C. Got a couple of parts to go. If we consider what was happening at P only, let's go back and get this diagram. So let's throw this in the bin. Let's go back and get this diagram here. What we're going to get is We're going to get, if we just want to find the tension in the spring, we want to consider just one of the particles now, either particle P or particle Q. So if I consider, well, particle P's got less forces, it's only got T acting to the right and the friction acting to the left, whereas Q has got the added 30, which just means slightly more complicated. Not mar mar it's only marginal, but slightly. So if we consider particle P, if we resolve to the right for particle P, we get the tension in the string minus the friction at P is equal to the mass times acceleration, which is two lots of four thirds. So sorting all this out, we know that T must be eight thirds plus the friction at P, or we know that T must be eight thirds plus mu R plus mu lots of R at P. So we know that this is our 8 thirds plus our value for mu, which was 10 over 21, multiplied by our reaction at P is 2G. So we can sort this out in a calculator. G is 9.8 is normal. T works out as 12 newtons.